Peter, um, with the lead up to this election yesterday in Greece, we saw a head-on-head -head, um, run between the new Democratic um, Party and then also Syriza. The result is a very calming one for the markets. Your view? Well, it's not really that calming, I think. If we look at uh, Spanish yields in particular headed higher, um, rumours and, and worry that the Oliver Wyman uh, survey and uh, consultancy projects around the Spanish banks will actually show a, a cash requirement, their capital requirement of 150 billion euros, despite the EU pledging 100 billion uh, as meant to be more than enough for the Spanish bank system. And so I think investors have actually had a pretty calm day in the sense that they, they are equally as scared about Spain as they were before the Greek election. Um, and so we've seen clearly some rally as the short-term risk, perhaps exaggerated risk of euro collapse or whatever sort of event happening today. But really, nothing much has changed in the core structural eurozone problems. Peter, um, yes, yeah, so contagion, that is that's the name of the game now. All, all the focus have actually moved away from Greece and onto Spain. Do you think the other European countries like Italy and Portugal will also enter this, this uncertainty again? Well, clearly, as things get worse in, uh, in Spain, and remember in other banking systems in, in the region, such as France especially, which um, markets have taken their eye off for the moment, um, at least, then we will see more contagion coming through into uh, exposed banking systems in, in emerging markets, such as Latin America, such as Eastern Europe. South Africa is obviously fortunate that exposure into these uh, periphery bank systems is virtually non-existent. Um, but no, there's certainly more contagion to come. And at the end of the day, the Greek election is only a timing issue, if you like, about when Greece will get into real difficulties. We should remember that they'll run out of money uh, at the end of July. Um, and even even New Democracy, the, the leading uh, party, supposedly pro Bella, is talking about renegotiating uh, their terms with the EU. So still um, a lot of uncertainty, a lot of risk still to come. And it's still our baseline that uh, Greece will probably have to leave the uh, Eurozone at some point, even if it's not straight away after this election. Okay, so we see, um, we see all the contagion in Europe, still uncertainty in those markets, probably just a calm for a while. How do you see that impacting on Africa and specifically on South Africa? Well, we've seen some rally in the currencies today in South Africa, and the RAND is still a risk currency and a, a risk proxy, albeit perhaps less so than in the past in the 2008-09 crisis or the 2000. Um, and one sort of crisis as well. Um, but the RAND reacting positively, unsurprisingly, as we price out some of that short-term immediate risk um, around the Eurozone. But we still think dollar RAND is heading higher from here as those risks slowly grind and develop worse in, in the Eurozone. And let's not forget as well, we have other risks on the horizon, the U.S. fiscal ceiling, um, potential U.S. raising action coming through the end of the year as well. Um, so there's still plenty of reasons for dollar RAND to be weaker um, as we move into, uh, into Q3. Um, but medium run, we still believe that the ECB, the Fed, will have to provide additional monetary stimulus. And that's why after a short run bout of uh, RAND weakness, we still see uh, the RAND strengthening back uh, over the medium run. Stronger RAND, stronger euro on the back of the dollar compared to the dollar since yesterday's election. What other emerging uh, markets do you find favorable after this news? Well, in the short run, it uh, is still quite hard to see where, where there are meaningful trades for any any length of time. There are you know, structurally sound economies that we can uh, we can think about playing quasi safe havens. You might want to call them such as Mexico actually stands out in Latin America, um, Turkey and Poland in in Eastern Europe. Um, some places like a career in uh, in Asia, um, but these are these are more medium run stories. It's very hard to trade these sorts of places short run. Um, around events and, and news that's going on uh, in Greece. Longer term, will you still stay clear of the Eurozone investing wise in, in, in long term shares and in, obviously in bonds? But, or do you see more, more um, opportunities already in, in emerging markets now? Well, I think we've seen a structural asset reallocation uh, away from the Eurozone into uh, emerging markets. We've seen that from Japanese investors and, and our own Japanese. Um, clients. We've seen that from um, other Asian investors, U.S. investors. That that long-term, I think, sticky uh, reallocation in, into emerging markets that's going on, as well as at the same time reallocation within the eurozone from south to north. I don't think that will reverse uh, anytime soon, based on the events of the weekend. Um, people are still uh, structurally bearish, I think, about the outlook. Investors and that that sort of global capital realignment is is set to continue 
um, for some time to come. That's clearly positive for these quasi-safe havens like, uh, like South Africa.